Turning to technology, from diagnosing urological cancers to predicting patient outcomes, the use of artificial intelligence within the field of urology is becoming more commonplace by the day like it or not. Here to discuss the pros and the cons is Dr. Andrew Hung. Pleasure to have you joining us today. Thanks for having me. Let's get started. Can you kind of boil down some of the ways that AI or machine learning can be used by urologists? Sure. You know, from uh, diagnosing cancers or urologic conditions to treating them to after treatment, figuring out how to manage patients and, you know, predict, let's say, recurrence of disease, those are all you know, areas ripe for AI to play a role. So there are a myriad of ways. Absolutely. There are some concerns. Can we place our full trust in AI? What do you say? I would say not yet. Okay. Uh, you know, that uh, today, you know, there's not a lot of AI used in clinical practice yet, but I think there's uh, big changes that are gonna happen where there are gonna be specific areas where physicians can utilize AI to enhance how they do care. It's not gonna happen overnight and it's not gonna be for every area of uh, urology, for instance. It's gonna be in select areas where it can enhance how physicians treat, how we take care of problems, uh, how we engage with our patients and how we manage diseases. And it's something that's gonna have to be done very carefully. We're still gonna have to use the scientific rigor that we do with any new technology that we adopt, but you know there will be areas where AI will be a part of uh, patient care. So, do you see very slow implementation? I do. I think it's you know similar to any new technologies that we as a field have adopted in the last many years. Take robotic surgery. You know, it's been around for some time, and it wasn't like overnight we just took it and said, yeah, let's let's do it. It was careful. You know, there was a lot of scientific rigor in terms of evaluating its value understanding its safety, feasibility, all those good things that we're not gonna just throw out because there's this new, you know, exciting technology uh, around. You touched on this a minute ago, but are there varying levels of reliability with AI when it comes to where you might wanna implement it within your practice? Yeah, you know, when you train models, it's gonna give you a sense of the performance of how the models perform. And depending on what the data set is that you're looking at, depending on what the modality, for instance, is it radiology, is it pathology, is it MRIs or CT scans, and what exactly is the clinical question you're looking at, the performances of these models, you know, they vary greatly. And how well are they tested? You know, are they tested in an environment where it's at a singular hospital and it only works for one patient, or is it, you know, across many different hospitals, across different continents, and so forth? And so. There is tremendous variability in how robust uh, these models have been vetted. Okay. And really, we're looking for the best. We're looking for models that will not only assess well for patients at a given hospital, but really will assess any patient across the board. So, you know, that remains to be seen in many areas, but that's the rigor that has to happen to ensure that these models are actually safe and, and ready for clinical use. You know, from a patient perspective, the concern is how accurate is the information, you know, that exactly. AI is churning out. But from a physician perspective, one of the concerns is, is this going to take my job? Right. What do you say to that? I don't think it's going to take our jobs. I, th I think that, you know, AI is particularly good at uh, rote tasks, things that, you know, uh, require lots of memory that humans may not be able to remember, you know, a hundred you know, patients ago what they may have seen, but these models will have perfect memory. And where humans come in is our insight, human insight. And clini clinical insight is something that we can't necessarily replace nowadays. And I don't see that happening anytime soon. There will always be room for a human in the room. I think so. <laughs> so as a physician, what excites you the most about the future of AI? You know, I see AI as an opportunity for us to enhance uh, patient care. Physicians are humans, we are all humans, we do make mistakes. Take for instance, in a surgical performance, there is wide variability in terms of the performance of surgeons. And can we narrow that performance gap? Yes, I think so, and I think AI can play that role. So it's not gonna replace uh, surgeons, for instance, but it may help us elevate all surgeons so that we all perform at a higher standard. There was a recent article published by NIH that essentially says AI is here to stay, like it or not. And it alluded to the fact that for physicians that are hesitant and reluctant to implement AI in their practice, they're gonna end up falling behind. What do you say to that? I would say that AI is a technology to stay, whether we like it or not, and it behooves us to understand you know, what are its strengths, what are its capabilities, but also understand what their limitations are and understand where 
humans will always still play a role and, and really just understanding how it fits into that ecosystem. So I don't think physicians are going to get lost <laughs> and, and we're going to keep our jobs. <laughs> Wonderful. All right, final question for you. You are an expert on AI. You travel around talking to a lot of different groups. What has been the general feedback that you've received once you've kind of explained what AI is, how it can be implemented into the urology practice? What do you hear from physicians? You know, the first reaction is this is amazing, this is great, and people start daydreaming about what it can do. And what I try to say is, yes, it is, it is exciting, but we have to implement it responsibly. Right. And we have to, just because it's this you know, fancy thing, it doesn't mean that we throw away all our rules of adopting things responsibly, you know, vetting things uh, you know, carefully, and, and understanding, again, what are their strengths and weaknesses, and then finding the best environment to use it. Great advice. Well, Dr. Hug, thank you so much for your expertise today and for Thanks your time. Thanks for having me.